coming at you with something that might make you feel like, oh, oh, are you sure? It might convict you. It might correct you. It might draw you in closer. It might also bring you life and life to the full, especially as an entrepreneur. And isn't that what we're looking for? We're looking to live a life of sustenance, not just success. We're looking as a marketplace minister to have impact and influence, influence connected to flow from the father, to be gifted out to essentially disciples, our community. If you look at at community building, if you look at influence, if you look at creating ministries or businesses, leadership, all of this is connected to people. But ultimately, God is most concerned currently with you in this moment right now. Well, he's concerned with all of his children simultaneously, but I'm here to talk to you about something that's going to help you become a better discipleship creator and a better person associated to the leadership that you have influence over and the ship of leaders that you're guiding. Do you see how it's all connected? But ultimately something that was deposited earlier was this understanding that it's not necessarily just the ship. It's the leader shift. It's the leadership that needs to happen within us in order for us to become more like him and more like the vision of the person we're supposed to be connected to the body of Christ. It's who he formulated us as in our mother's womb. It's us truly being everything that we're called to be, which is not doing, it's not by works. And so I don't wanna cause friction or make you feel like you have more to add to your to-do list by me sharing you this revelation that's been transpiring inside of me and through the Bible the last couple of weeks, but more so for you to be able to sit, simmer, be, have your personal awe and wonder moment with God and to go about your merry way and maybe come back and subscribe to the channel, like, comment, do the things that they tell you to do in the world, but we're not in the world. Well, we're in the world, but we're not of the world. So do the things, but don't become the things. I'm not here for the follow. I want you to follow him. And so I'm coming to share about who he is and who he's been to me and how I teach all of our business development people, whether it's been groups, whether it's been individuals, whether it's been masterminds that I go to train, whether I'm on a stage somewhere and I'm speaking to lots of people, it's this idea of the being model, the becoming model associated to business, brand, and being. It's the influence model. If you think about it, a lot of us are so focused on our business growth or our brand strategy, and we forget about the being connected to that. So when someone comes and they have this idea for business, it's brilliant. It's great. It might be a direct deposit from the Lord, but they're trying to make it happen in their will, in their ideation, perhaps even from my blueprint. And I'm like, I don't give out blueprints like that. Instead, I can give you resource. I can give you and point to you the right scripture. I can come and we can build a plan and a vision opportunity, but it's not going to look like anybody else's. When God gave Noah the craftsmanship connected to the boat, Nobody else had been building boats. We know this. He was in a dry land, right? It hadn't rained in so long. When God gave them the idea of the temple, nothing like that had ever been created. This is associated to Numbers. This is associated to Leviticus. This is associated to all the Bible books that you don't read because it's like so dry. This is not dry. This is sustenance. And it all came from me. When I was realizing every time I'm building business, and this happened to me, this is my story, hello, always be coming. It happened to me when I was building business, I was building brand, and I was building seven-figure, nine-figure even uh, budgets where we were working with seven-figure businesses, and I was dry. My home was dry, my house was dry, my kiddos were dry. My wellspring of life was so not real. It was like I was thirsty all the time. And when you're thirsty, you're going to find water and you're likely looking for things that the world is giving you on their silver platter versus what heaven wants you to have, because you don't want to have that moment of shift, that moment of be like me, that moment of I'm calling you higher because comfort zones seem easier than Christ-like walking, right? Walking with and walking alongside of Christ. And so I'm talking to the Christian who's like, the lukewarm Christian. We can all get in that place. I'm talking to the person who is trying to develop a business right now, and they have never thought to even put their faith in their business. I'm talking to the person who's ready to scale, and they're in that scalability, like hustle hard mentality, and they're burnt out. They're exhausted. 
they're feeling like this is lifeless, but it's supposed to be bringing me life because they've attached the definition of life to something that's not real or something that costs money. And so you're putting your valuation or validation connected to that exterior thing when God's like, can we just focus right here? Let's come back to the center, come back to the holiest of holies, come back to my dwelling place. Now, if I'm talking and I'm falling on deaf ears and you're like, I don't know what she's saying. We need to have a whole nother conversation and there's other videos for you to follow. But if this is landing, if you, if I've piqued your interest at least enough, I want to talk to you about the fig tree. I want to talk to you about the fig tree. There's actually so many references of fig trees throughout the Bible, starting back in Genesis all the way to Deuteronomy and Judges and Samuel. But I was in the New Testament, specifically in Matthew and Mark, which is where these two stories, these two parables and experiences happen in the gospel. And they're talking about how Jesus was on his way into the city, into Jerusalem, and they had passed by a fig tree and he actually got excited. He went over to said fig tree expecting because of the blossom and it was an early blossom that there was going to be figs. And when he went into the inside of the beautiful, like uh, grown tree and he recognized that there was no fruit, he was so mad. He actually cursed the tree. He cursed the tree and the disciples were really confused. Like that's out of character of, from God. Like that's out of character of Jesus. He's like usually so calm and cool and collected, right? That's not like the Jesus I serve. That's not something I would want to do. God, why are you cursing? It's just a tree. It didn't do anything to you. In fact, it's blooming early. And this was a sign of the church. And I still believe that this is a conversation that we need to have connected to business and branding, which is why I'm bringing it up. Because we can make the exterior of anything look good. Make it look fancy, fast cars and freedom, right? You know the people who create branding images or branding photo shoots and they're like in front of a jet, but they don't own a jet. Or the people who are at the beach or and they're self-imposing themselves at said location. Or they did that like several years back and that's not actually what they look like or what they're doing anymore. And the smile on their face is actually fictitious because the family that they're with is actually broken and they just had a fight. This is Sunday morning, y'all. You see this. How are you? Good, good, we're good. And he, they were just like cursing at each other in the car. Get your shoes on. Get your effing shoes on and get in the car. <laughs> like we're going to be late to church. And then we get to church. We're all good. Like this is so ridiculous. But he is specifically talking about the Pharisees and Sadducees, the, the Jewish culture, the leaders of this time who have created this, we are holier than thou appearance. And yet they had no true fruit, fruit of the vine. Fruit that you actually within your business right now today can have when you are abiding in him and not a fruit tree that is grafted to something that is going to provide you no sustenance, but maybe temporary satisfaction. Ooh, I'm preaching right now. I don't want to get on a high horse, but I have to tell you, there is a new way to establish your business, to grow, to scale, to become. And it's associated to focusing on your identity, focusing on who God created you to be and not focus on self-care, not focus on, I heard this earlier, soul care, but focus on him. When our eyes are fixated on God, he gives us new desires of our heart. He replenishes, he restores, he will bear the fruit in your life that you so desperately want. And I know you want it for the people that you're connected to. You want to pass good fruit. Imagine if the fruit you are passed all the time, either from your mentors or your coaches or your leaders or your pastors, or even maybe your parents was always rotten. I know this is a part of your past, which is why I say that there's this moment of correction, this opportunity. And all God is looking for is for you to be grafted into him so that you can bear good fruit and you cannot pay any amount of money for this business plan. It's free. It's completely, fully free. And it's found only in him, which is why I developed everything that I did connected to FounderCon. And I say, I, Lord, forgive me because it was not an I job. Nothing that we do as a collective, especially even this video, you see my face, but there are so many hands and the hands that have nurtured this tree. It comes as a collective and that's operating as the body of Christ in the fullness that God would have us do because there is no hierarchy in the kingdom. And I'm operating as the body who's like in the forefront, on the face, on the screen right now, but there's 
editors and clippers and posters and SEO strategists and hashtag specialists and copywriters and clippers and media strategists and marketers and financial gurus. I mean, there's so much transpiring. There's also other faces in the forefront because I'm not the only teacher. God doesn't just talk to me. And so even in your leadership experience, if your grafting is not with other people who are founded in biblical principles, I would encourage you to get connected to said leaders. It will shift everything in the momentum and in the fruit in which God has prepared for you before you said yes to this journey, before you said yes to entrepreneurship. So if you want in, if you want in on juicy conversations like this, moments of correction will actually catapult you. Correction is just a catapult. Just remember that. Correction is just a catapult. You've got to come hang out at the Founder Collective. It's a Wednesday gathering for founders based on Ephesians 2, 19 through 20. And of course, join us at the FounderCon. It's coming your way to a city near you in the coming years. This is the third annual. And so track us down, check the links below. And I'm excited to see your fig fruit bearing tree based on the becoming model of being brand and business. Love you guys. Chat soon.